Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning has been on breast cancer awareness. Breast cancer can be scary and confusing both for those diagnosed and for their family and friends. It's important to have a strong support network to help with the physical and emotional demands of this disease. There are many support services available to assist you on the journey, and one of those is Cole's Conversations for the Cure. Amberly Childs is the program manager for Cole's Conversations for the Cure, and it's a pleasure to have you here, Amberly. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. And Cole's Conversations for the Cure is affiliated with the Susan G. Coleman Southeast Wisconsin chapter. Uh, if you would tell us more about this educational program that, like I said, encourages women to get those screenings and feel free to talk about the one thing that most of us try to avoid. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, so the partnership is between, as you said, Susan G. Komen of Southeast Wisconsin and Coles Cares. And we just embarked in our sixth year of partnership with Coles Cares. And the goal is to encourage women to not only know about breast awareness, but to know about what we like overall breast health, mm -hmm. not just breast cancer, but breast health. And then to encourage those women to take action and get regular breast screenings. Absolutely. And I think this is awesome in the sense that uh, Coles plays such a huge part in this because they pay for the grant that allows allows this to take place and uh, you told me that you actually are considered a hometown partner. Yes. So it's that example of uh, corporate giving back and making a difference in the community. It is and you know one of the things that I love about our partnership is that when it first began they approached Komen and said hey what can we do in Southeast Wisconsin in regards to women's health mm -hmm. and so Komen puts together every four years what we call a community profile and it's a needs assessment of what's happening in our community so we can really get the pulse on where services are okay who needs more services and where we can deliver um, more services and so we're able to look at that needs assessment and then we're able to create a program conversations for the cure mm -hmm. Coles came on and became um, our, our funder for that and so with that we now have spoke with over 13,000 women wow. in the six years that we've been um, in partnership with Coles cares and it's really special because a lot of those women um, are inner city and have really probably never had a discussion about breast health some of them as our last guest talked about might be bilingual or mm -hmm. might only speak a different language and so there might be some language barriers they still need to hear the message even though they're part of our community yes. and they speak a different language but then there are other women who may have heard this message again and again but are still reluctant to go and get a breast screening done so we really are talking to every woman out there some women it's a second or a third time some women it's the very first time yeah and it's important now I always like to emphasize it too because we always uh, put the spotlight on women but there are men Absolutely. who are also diagnosed with breast cancer and it was just last year uh, Gilbert Brown former Green Bay Packer came on the show mm -hmm. and talked about his brother dying from breast cancer so just wanted to make sure I uh, remind the fellas out there that it is yes. possible and that if they are feeling any symptoms uh, that they too should be able to talk about this. Right? That's right. Well, one thing that's interesting is the signs and symptoms of breast cancer are the same for a woman or a man. Mm -hmm. And so we like to encourage everyone to become familiar with how their body looks, how the body feels. And we all got dressed this morning. We had an yeah. opportunity to become more familiar with our bodies. And so as partners, as siblings, we can be looking out on men's chest, on their bodies. Let's say it's summer and they have their shirt off. Mm -hmm. um, you might notice a rash on that chest. To a man, it might be a rash. To a woman who might understand breast cancer, she might think, hmm, this is different. Mm -hmm. And we should have a doctor or a clinician take a look at that. Yeah, and it's not every day that you hear uh, this being talked about in regards to men. I think for the longest, uh, the only man that I ever affiliated breast cancer with was uh, actor Richard Roundtree. Right. And he is a survivor and he does a great job in spreading uh, the message as well. Uh, you talked about those signs and symptoms that people should be aware of and that in many instances it could be the same for women as right. for men. So let's talk about what people should be looking for. You made a great point. Uh, you get dressed every single day. You're looking looking at yourself, a lot of people don't take a lot of time to examine themselves, but uh, in the shower, getting dressed, that's the perfect time to just kind of see uh, how things feel, right. look, so then when that changes, 
you know that something's different. That's so, exactly it. Uh, let's talk about signs and symptoms. So the first thing that you know we all hear about is the lump or a hard knot, yeah. um, and that's the most common. However, lumps don't always have to be, let's say, defined. Yeah. Um, I know my lump felt like a wet cotton ball. It was, it changed, it moved, and so it kind of confused me mm. because I was, was expecting a rock, a BB, something really hard and defined. Um, so it can be either or. Um, sometimes there's no sign at all. Right. Um, but you know, one of the things, uh, what about change in size or shape of people's breasts? Something that's not talked about often, but some women and men have different shapes and sizes of their breast. If you have, a, a let's say, different size cups, that's fine if it's your normal. Mm. It's when something changes for you. So that's the most important thing that we can really, I love to stress this with younger women, beginning in their 20s, let's get them familiar with how the body looks and feels. What is normal? So if something is ever off or different, then we get our healthcare provider involved and we start asking more questions. Yeah. Um, a rash is something that can be breast cancer. It could be something else. However, let's say it's winter. What if it was between your two, two breasts, mm -hmm. in the center of the chest? Um, maybe you think, well, I have a new sports bra and it's rubbing and it's winter and it's dry yeah. and a week or two weeks go by and it's still there. You know, that to me is an inclination. Something's happening. Let's go to the doctor and get, it, get our healthcare providers involved. And with so many things, especially when we talk about cancer of any form, uh, early detection is key. So you talk about seeing something there for a week or two or three weeks, uh, you just can't ignore stuff. You have got to, uh, see a doctor and just put your mind at ease and not ignore it or think it's going to go away. Well, fear is a big barrier, a big reason why a yeah. lot of women or men don't go to the doctor for any reason. Right. So what I like to say is fear is real. Let's acknowledge it. I'm scared. This could be serious. It could not be serious, but I can't let that fear cripple me from mm -hmm. taking action and doing something that's going to better myself and my family. So I like to say, let's take the fear, acknowledge it, let's put it on this shelf and let's let it hang out close by, <laughs> but then let's still find information out. Let's contact organizations like ABCD, mm -hmm. get information. Let's reach out to local organizations, find information, use that information um, to help us make decisions. Um, with a with a healthcare provider. I love that. So uh, before we run out of time, we got to talk about how people are able to have these conversations. Uh, sessions can be held just about anywhere, right? Yeah. Including somebody's basement, maybe. That's right. <laughs> we'll talk to anyone and everywhere. We just need an invite. Bring us into your your home, your business. I do a lot of corporate work, lunch and learns, but some of our best events are at churches within the community mm -hmm. because there's nothing more trusted than when a, a family member or friend of the community it says come into our church come into our neighborhood and let's have a discussion um, and one of the things that was really unique about our program is is our trained volunteers our community health workers mm -hmm. um, and we have a variety of them different ethnicities different languages different ages breast cancer survivors and so we're able to find the right woman to go into that community to represent that population so they can have a real engaging discussion about health and about what those breast screenings are and how we can access them. Absolutely, and so uh, I was gonna say, what will you talk about? But really, it's anything that's on the minds of the people who have gathered to have the conversation. Right. And you do provide individuals who have the knowledge to answer those questions, and if not, then you'll find somebody who can. Yes. That's, that's part of the whole conversation. Well, no one on our team are nurses. Well, there are a few nurses, mm -hmm. I take that back, but we're not trained in the, the conversations for the CURE mm -hmm. program. We are community health workers. Um, there are not doctors and nurses on our team, so we are lay people delivering um, layman community work. Um, we're getting out there and, and spreading, I like to say, hitting the pavement and spreading the message. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's important uh, quickly uh, to talk about when someone should get a screening versus a mammogram. So uh, go ahead and lay that out for yeah, individuals. The, the first thing I like to share is that sometimes there's some misconception in the community between the difference of a clinical breast exam, mm -hmm. a self-exam, and a mammogram. So first the self-exam done on self, mm -hmm. and then the next would be the clinical exam. The difference is that's done in a clinic, done by a clinician, um, and that's really to learn the landscape of the female or the male's body. Um, and then as we age and we move into our 40s, we wanna add mammography into our screening um, 
guidelines, um, excuse me, into our screening repertoire. That's what we okay. want to do. The biggest thing I like to share with women, as a woman diagnosed in her 30s with breast cancer, it is so important that every woman know their own family history, know what their normal is, and if something's changing, ask your doctor. Is there a screening right for me? Am I eligible for a mammogram? You know, am I a good candidate for that? Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to put a number per se on this is when every woman should be screened, but more so if a woman knows her family history and can advocate for her own health and herself, she and her doctor can build a screening plan that's best for her. Wow, and what I love most is that there is a uh, hotline for individuals who may need help paying for a breast yes. exam. You guys offer that 1-877-910-PINK is the number to call. And I quickly, Amber Lee, before we run out of time, wanted to uh, just mention in case there's someone who saw this article that came out a couple of weeks ago in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. It says the American Cancer Society now says women should start mammograms later in life and get fewer of them, a stance that puts the trusted group closer to an influential government task force's advice. Your thoughts on that quickly as we wrap up. Well, as a breast cancer survivor diagnosed at 36 years old, um, I know that how important mammograms can be. Mm -hmm. um, however, it really needs to be a personalized decision between each woman and her health care provider. So I encourage the woman to ask questions, get a good provider, work in a nice relationship with them to where they're comfortable. So this is an easy topic to discuss. And then we, that woman can begin getting mammograms at the appropriate age for her. It's all about having that conversation. That's right. Thank you so much for stopping by. Amber Lee Childs is the program manager for Cole's Conversations for the Cure. You can log on to Cole's Conversations for the Cure org or call 414-389-4885. That's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams, as always. I thank you for watching, and I do hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our issues, Milwaukee. Have a great day.